Aloha. You're watching F5 On Demand. I'm Technical Marketing Manager Peter Silva, and welcome to an inside look where we take a little deeper dive into big IP technology. And today, we're going to take an inside look at the new Enterprise Manager version 3.1. And we're very fortunate to have Bruce Butterfield with us. He's the principal software engineer for our management solutions. Thanks for joining us, Bruce. Hey, no problem. It's great to show up. And so first off, can you tell us a little bit about Enterprise Manager and what it's all about? Sure. Enterprise Manager is the product that kind of uh, ties together device management for uh, the big IPs. Big IPs are very complex devices. They've got a lot of knobs, bells, whistles, as anyone who's uh, played with them has uh, experienced. And Enterprise Manager takes some of the, the routine tasks and automates them for you. Cool. So we got a uh, EM31 open right here. Yeah. And so uh, well, what do you want to show us first, Bruce? Well, we can actually kind of look a little bit about uh, EM itself. For those of you who are not familiar with what EM is or what it does, um, Primarily, EM is a device management tool. Uh, so if I go in and I can, I can discover uh, big IP devices that are out there, I've, I've done that. Now let's just take a look at one of them. Uh, and, and that's, that, that, that's that discover button on the uh, Yes, I right can go there. in and if I want to go and discover a new one, all I do is essentially enter its IP address and credentials. And that pulls in all the information that we need to do the management on the EM side. Got it. So... Right now, we're taking a look at uh, just a, a, a bare properties page. Uh, tells me what the device address is, which the boot location is, the current version of software. Uh, it's, it's very handy. We can collect statistics on it. We can look at configurations. In fact, let's, let's go to that uh, page. It's actually kind of fun. So if I select a partition path, this is not a complicated big IP. This is actually a fairly simple one. But I can actually go in and look at modules, object types, look for route domains so that I have a, a single route domain and actually take a look at the actual configuration on that device. This is, this is interesting because, of course, we can do that across all devices. And we have another capability of actually doing searches mm. across all devices to find particular configurations. So that's very handy when you're doing um, any kind of uh, configuration management, which, of course, largely that's what you're doing with big IPs, <laughs> <Right>. configuration <laughs> management, right? So that's uh, that's device. I mean, again, we have a, a number of other features uh, that, but I, we kind of want to talk about Log IQ a bit. So let's go to the to the Log IQ page, and we have some search results that come up by default. This system is a test system, so the data isn't all that interesting. But I can kind of show you that once you have this, it looks like these look like standard logs. They they you know they have a timestamp. They have a bunch of um, essentially name value pairs. And one of, the, one of the nice things I can do with these is I can look at any particular log entry and expand it. So I can see uh, if, if I'm looking for desk port or you know, the host name or something like that, it actually is it's much clearer than looking at it uh, um, in, in the big text blob that you see below. Right. But that's really only uh, part of the story. The, the main thing here is that we can actually build up queries. So. Let's say I have a I, I, I know that there's been a problem with a particular O oh, a VIP or a uh, you know I know that there's an inbound host that's causing us trouble or something like that. So I can actually take um, a, a host name, let's say log host name, and click on that and that ends up going right into my filter and I can just look for that particular host and uh, do a quick search on it. Now the search here will be, highly irrelevant because it's test data. They all have this particular host name on yeah, it. So, okay. But that's the idea. And I can also do essentially uh, full Boolean queries on this. I can say this and uh, source IP and VLAN and then do a search on those things. And of course, I can go in and edit these uh, by hand or I can pick a different value from, uh, from another log entry. But this actually ends up saying, first of all, it tells me what fields are out there. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to find all the fields that I have to deal with. If I'm looking for a source IP address, oh, look, it's called source IP. Um, it isn't source, you know, uppercase IP, it's source underca uh, 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 underscore IP. So that's actually very handy. And I was noticing, it's kind of cool how um, you hover over each of those areas and, you know, black text on black text is, you know, you kind of, oh, what do I copy and paste? But it right. highlights you know, that specific field is necessary. And I noticed you just, all you did was click on it and that then brought that filter up into that area. That is right. That's right. Yeah. Pretty the, cool. The UI is, is actually fairly nicely designed. So um, the 
One of the nice things about this is we are actually using uh, an indexing technology, which makes searches reasonably fast. Now, we're still, we're still talking about lots of data. So they're not instantaneous, but they're much faster than they would be if you had to go through and, and literally do a, a grep or a find uh, through, through the files. So we can also look at time periods. We can say, I want to look at, 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 at uh, searches that occurred in a, a previous week, or I can customize the search. I can say, you know, from a particular time period to, uh, to another time period. And so I can reduce the, the search terms in, in, in that frame. Um, and that would obviously help. So uh, IT admins at home, they get the, you know, they get the page or they get the, you know, the buzz the next morning. They know there's an incident. They're not sure what really occurred, but they know they got the page at a certain time and they can go in and, and right. define that and then narrow it down to what they're looking for. Yeah. Interesting thing about log data is it is time series. It's basically all, uh, it, it's it, every, every log value essentially is, is mostly relevant by time. I mean, the event as well, but you also have to have this time frame. So we wanted to make that easy to, yep. to narrow down searches with that. So that's the, the search capability, which is actually pretty cool. Configuring, um, uh, it is actually fairly simple as well. All we essentially did was we added the, the device, I don't know if you noticed this or not, it's the same device that we had right. discovered. So you can pick any discovered device and add it in here. And that will configure that big IP uh, to send logs to, uh, to, to these, uh, these log IQ devices. Just as a, a brief aside, log IQ itself does not run on the EM. It actually runs on a virtual device. EM manages it, but you don't want all that traffic going through EM. That would be kind of silly. So we actually, the big IP uh, uses something called high-speed logging, which is a feature of big IP, and it pushes these logs directly to the log IQ device or devices and load balancing uh, the, the logging. So it can actually ha uh, handle quite a quite a good load of, of log files. And we all know that log files are not getting smaller. Yeah, <laughs> especially with compliance and having to keep track yes. of all this stuff and hold on to it for a long time. And and you were saying, so you, you find the device and bring it in. And once, once you have it in uh, and set up to then start sending the data to EM, you don't have to, you don't have to then go to that big IP itself and- no. And say, oh, oh, and by the way, you got to do this also. No, there's some, there is some configuration required on the big IP uh, initially so that it understands how to talk to the, the log IQ device. Um, mm. And that is outlined very well in our installation guide. Okay. Um, but it's, uh, since you can send logs to multiple de destinations, you can send it to internal uh, um, files, you can send it to internal database, you can send it to external systems such as Splunk or arc site, or you can send it to log IQ. Cool. So the, uh, index, we call it an index cluster because you can have multiple, um, log IQ devices out there it is actually easily set up as well. We have a general configuration for the configure of, uh, for it. it. We say, how long do you want, uh, to hold on to log messages? This has to do with, um, you know, literally how much data do you want to deal with? Yep. Um, it, it does to a certain extent also impact how fast searches are and things like that. Um, this can be any number, uh, because essentially these devices, uh, you download this virtual device from, from the F5 site, install it in your VMware, um, infrastructure and configure any size disc or discs that you want to be able to, to hold on to these log messages. So the only configuration you really have to do from EM is to say, how long do you want it? Uh, give it a, a DNS and, a, and an NTP server so that it, you know, you know how to, how to get it. Actually, uh, you really, you need time. Okay. The, the <laughs> DNS is handy to get at a time server. Uh, one of the things that you want is all your, your log messages to have coherent, uh, timestamps. Sure. So that's what, that's what this does. And, and maximum days to archive. So, so after the 14 days, it'll, they, it'll it rolls off. So it'll they're be self-administered, right. Kind exactly. of be purged. But in the meantime, as, as I think you were saying, you're still able to export that to, to a, another location. If yeah. you, if you still wanted to hold on to you oh, know, sure. day, yes. fi day 15 to 17. That's right. That's yeah. right. You can take that and, and move it any place you want. Cool. So yeah, this is, it's actually a, a fairly robust system. Uh, we're, we're, we're pretty happy with it and we want it to go in many directions in the future. So also what we've done is to, uh, for specifically for network firewall events is we have a custom page, uh, to, to search on essentially the same cluster, but we specialized it to, 
uh, have columns that, uh, and uh, retrievals that are relevant uh, to, to our network objects themselves. Mm. So we have uh, time, context, uh, the actual um, uh, uh, um, name, uh, address, port, all these kind of things. You can see the source destination. And searches are a bit different on this. This actually matches the same page that lives on Big IP. It has the same behavior. The difference is you're looking at logs from all your Big IPs, not just one Big IP. So I can actually drag this up. I have to pick one. And I'll do that again because I just missed it. Oh, look at that. Let me add another yeah. value. So these are logical ands by default. So it's it would have to be a source address of 1011.22.07 and source port 44707. Um, you can express the an or logic if you want to, but in, in this case, primarily you're you're narrowing down. You're not mm -hmm. trying to widen your search out. So uh, and do the searches on these. Now, does does some of this uh, event correlation, like for instance, say there is a security incident with a you know a certain application, a virtual server on a particular IP, and and that virtual server is fronting Exchange? Can you can you even understand that it's Exchange that was potentially the target, or it's more it's more the you know, the box itself, if you well, will. Remember, we're kind of agnostic to, to usage in this. We, uh, we, all we have is the name value pairs that are in the, f in the fields themselves. If they mention exchange in the fields, we we'll, we can find it. Got it's it. easy. Cool. Uh, if it exists in the data, we, we don't actually impose any kind of a structure other than the common logging structure. It's a, it's an IETF, uh, standard called RFC 5424. If you export your logs in that format, uh, log IQ can, can search it can index it and search it. Very, very cool stuff, Bruce. I used to, I, used, I remember, you know, EM in the, in the early days, and it's certainly come a, come a long way, especially over the last couple of years. Yeah. We've tried to move into areas that we've found our customers, uh, need essentially what you're trying to do is give them an enterprise perspective versus a single big IP perspective for a number of our customers, certainly our larger customers, one big IP may cover a very, very small amount of what their business is. If you can actually look at statistics, logs, alerts, and things like that that are coming from multiple big IPs, it becomes a much more compelling story. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate you joining us today. This is great stuff. So there you have it, an inside look at Enterprise Manager version 3.1. And I'm real, like I said, I, this was great to have you over here. So for Bruce, I'm Peter. And we're with F5 Networks. Visit us online at www.f5.com and follow us on Twitter at F5 Networks. Thanks for watching.